Hello, my name is Giuseppe and in this video we'll discuss frames for what a stroke frame is, how to get a variety of frames from shapes and actually from the frames section all from the graphics option. Okay, to get started let's get rid of this and that's the picture we'll be using. We'll keep it handy here in the photo bin and we'll start out with a new screen 10 inches by 10 inches 300 resolution none of that's important but it's the sizes I chose you can set up whatever type screen or background you care to use this particular one is white we'll maybe change that let's hit the uh, command or control zero make it a little bigger for the demo and we'll go down to the bottom right here to graphics click that up and I think uh, we'll choose background here and get our blue background in there just for appearances sake okay our very first frame we'll bring our picture up is pretty simple actually it's called a stroke and you access that by going into your layers layer style style settings and it's one of the options here called stroke we'll choose that and slightly move the size slider here you can see what's happening on the screen you can make any size you want way up to large and then make it whatever color you want also by changing the color from over here so basically that's the stroke and then to add a little effect to it layer layer style style settings and if we want to add a little depth to it we'll make a drop shadow I always like to increase the opacity first so that we can see the shadow and then back off from there if we need to now the distance adjusts how far the shadow will come from the picture itself and that's coming down below the picture as you can see and we don't want the light coming from right overhead there so we'll pretend it's at 10 o'clock how's that now you see a good sharp shadow there and it's pretty black let's back off on the opacity and make it not quite so black and size determines how sharp or fuzzy the shadow is like a soft light let's see we can also change that by our number here 227 let's change it to 200 how's that okay now we see the shadow falling to the lower right from the upper left going this way the light coming in from that way all right that takes care of our shadow direction from the light and we already have the stroke around the picture so that takes care of that one okay so much for that well we finished on the strokes so let's get on with the next one that'll be one from the shapes department so let's go down here on the layers side and way down the bottom here and choose graphics and we're in the shapes there there's all sorts of shapes the one right here is the one we used before so it's still there waiting for us all right we'll make this a little larger i want to make sure i don't get that out of proportion so let me see, I think we'll go a little bit bigger and make it just a trifle deeper about there check the green arrow let's go display the layers panel again here now we can see where we have a layer with the shape on it and a layer with our background next we'll introduce the picture 
which is down here on the bottom in our uh, photo bin. Just drag it up here and we want the picture on top of our shape. That automatically uh, activated our move tool when I brought that picture up. Now we can kind of guesstimate where we want that centered on that on that uh, shape but to make sure if you remember from a previous video that I did you can check the uh, clipping mask process by moving the opacity so that you can see through that picture to the shape now we can see that maybe we want to move that a little further over here possibly even go a little larger with our picture do that and then move it about there when we're satisfied with that go up there to opacity again I'm left clicking on the word opacity and moving back to the right till it's a hundred percent when that pleases us we click the green arrow and next the clipping process needs to take place what that is is the picture will be clipped to the shape of that particular black shape that we had there. There are two ways to do the clipping mask. We can go over here in the uh, layers panel again and right click on the photo layer and choose create clipping mask and that would do it. Or a little keyboard shortcut is you can hold down the option or alt key while you move the cursor slowly to the bottom of the photo layer and watch it change when it changes to that little square with the downward arrow you left click let go of the uh, option or control key and you've got the picture clipped to the shape of that figure that we put in there so we can go from here to we'll select the, sh the shape first because we want to put a shadow on the right and bottom here so we go back up here like we did in the previous one uh, with the stroke example. Choose layer, layer style, and style settings. Brings up that same pop-up and we'll set the light source to about 10 o'clock again. Maybe just a little bit more there, right about there. And we want to do a drop shadow, so we'll select drop shadow. I like to increase the opacity a little bit so we can see that shadow when we introduce it by sliding the distance slider to the right. Watching the picture, we can see the shadow appear and it's looking pretty good, right? Maybe uh, about there. And it's a sharp, crisp shadow. And if we want one that's less focused or less sharp we can change that by the size slider here I'll go to the right a little bit on that and it gives it a, a soft effect like it might be a, a diffused light source and that says that looks pretty good okay on top of that we can add a stroke like we did on that first example go here and watch the picture on the edge as we adjust the size of the stroke going to the right and there's a little bit there's a little bit more I'm way up here if you want to go go overboard let's take it to maybe I don't know right about oh, we're a little smaller there right there okay and we can go one step further and even add bevel so watching the bevel effect Sometimes if we go too far, it'll make a kind of a faded or a glow along the edge of the picture, which is the green area here. So I'll slowly uh, check first at the bevel and then slowly move to the right. And I'll show you, I'll go too far to the right and show you what I was talking about. That glow there, that's a little overdone. So we'll go back until there's just a hint. Right about there and that gives a, a little 3d effect kind of like the green is a little higher than the black stroke around there 
So, we'll uh, go there, and it looks like our drop shadow has gone away here. What happened? Let's see if I can figure out what we did wrong here. Uh, it didn't go away, it's just not... Oh, we covered quite a bit of it with that stroke. So, we can correct that. Go back here and increase the distance so we get a shadow that's not so bashful. Maybe right there. No, a little stubborn. There we go. There it is. Okay, so we've got our shadow from below and on, on the right. So there we go. That uh, shape was taken from the, the category that is called shapes. And that uh, finalizes this one. If we like all our changes we made, hit the OK. Click off of the picture and there we are. And you can see the uh, kind of a puffed up effect of the green here. That gives it a little better depth or 3D look. And the shadow on our background helps to do that too. Alright. That will conclude this one, and the next one we do will also be from Shapes, but it'll be a little different process. So, we'll get by here and go on from here. Okay, here we are, and this one is going to be from Shapes also. We'll go over here to Graphics, and this is way down on the list of Shapes from where we were. Up above here, way up above is where we had the solid black. This time we're going to choose one that's not solid, one that's hollow. And it calls for a different process. So we'll drag that over here. Bring it up in size. And click the green arrow to OK. Let's go to our layers panel again here so we can see as we go what's happening. We have the layer separate here now with our mask on it and as you can see it's hollow. Okay, when you do this process it requires both a selection followed by a layer mask over here at the top right. That's a layer mask. But before you can use the layer mask you have to have a selection. Let's bring the picture in from down here in the photo bin and the picture comes in underneath the layer. We have the move tool activated over here on the left so we can move that where we want to. The move tool activates automatically when you slide a picture in there from the photo uh, bin. Uh, okay, approximate location of that and the next thing we need to do is to make a selection on the frame so that the selection is strictly on the black and not on the picture. So we'll go over here in the layers panel, choose the shape. Now this, there is more than one way to, to make a selection as you well know. We could go over here and this uh, polygonal tool could be used and you can make short runs uh, like this and just go around the curve gradually until you complete the, the oval. So I won't go clear around, but that's one way and you could select the whole thing. I'll just delete that by the command or control D. The other way is the way I'll try to show you and it takes a little coordination and I have very little of that, but I'll try it anyway. We try to make a selection this time Instead of the uh, polygonal tool, we're going to use the elliptical marquee over here on the left. You have a choice when you choose that to use a rectangle or a oval or circle, whichever you decide to make it into. We're going to use the elliptical and uh, come over here and try to first simulate uh, a shape pretty close to what we have down there, I'm guessing. And I'm holding, I can't stress enough, the left button on the mouse must stay depressed. Now I'm pressing the space bar also. And that lets me move this selection around so I can place it as good as possible on that black. And we can see the right side has to move in to the left so, it, so that it covers the black. 
Now I'll release the space bar, not the left click, the space bar only, while I move the mouse to the left, and that brings that oval in to the point where it's on the black. Now I can release the click on the mouse, and that places our selection right on the black. So the next step is to apply the layer mask. All right, and we want to click the photo layer and then go up there to this icon right here. That's the layer mask. And if we click that, it disposes all that extra picture and leaves just what's in that selection on the frame. All right, if we want to go any further and enhance that, we select the layer with the shape on it, with the frame on it, because we want to enhance the frame and do the same thing we did on those previous ones layer, uh, layer style and style settings brings up the same options light source from about here 10 o'clock or so we'll choose drop shadow increase the opacity a little bit so that we can see the shadow when it appears as we move the distance slider to the right and you can start seeing the shadow coming out from behind that frame and maybe well I want to go halfway between there and there and that's real touchy on that slider so let's see I want oh that's pretty good right there I was going to point out that you can also double click on the numbers here and type in a number so we'll type 75 just go a tiny bit closer in with the shadow all right and now if we want to soften the shadow we do like we did before with the size adjustment that changes it to a softer shadow which is a little more pleasing I think on most shadows but not necessary that's personal opinion okay we have that let's see let me okay that with the okay and okay we did revert to the shape now that's what I wanted to do. I want to be on the shape and do the same thing here and see if we can affect that a little bit. So we'll do the same thing. Layer, layer, layer style and style settings. And this time I want to try a bevel on that. So let's see if we can. Bevel, size, and it's affecting it. We can tell by this foggy edge here. I don't want that much, so I'll reduce that. And maybe have just right there it makes that kind of a rounded effect on on the frame itself and of course you, you could do a stroke if you wanted to of different color but I think we'll leave that black so that completes this process using a layer mask after you do a selection and we have a nice depth or 3d effect by the shadow on the right side and, and even a bonus right here from the shadow on the picture that gives it a little more depth and uh, image that the frame is actually on top of the picture which both the picture and the frame are on top of our blue layer by the ca uh, shadow here the shadow that they're casting so so much for this one the next one we do will be yet a different process and it's from the frames section Well, we are at the stage of our fourth and final example of frames. This one is different yet than the others. We'll go down here to graphics and select this time instead of shapes. We'll take frames and there are multiple uh, choices here of frames. Go way down here and find the frame we want right there is the one we need I'll drag that over okay and now it says click here to add photo so we'll do that let's just drag our photo up here and we're gonna look at this in a little different way here we can move the picture around and we can make it larger smaller position it how we like uh, Let's go back into the frames area and see how this 
is made up. This particular frame is made up in what's called groups. All three of these frames here. Let's check this green arrow so I can show you that they're all three, all three of these frames in one layer, so to speak. And that's this one up here. See the multiple squares? That designates they've been put into what's called groups. So they're all dependent upon this upper one here. And if we want to work on the frame by itself, we need to separate it from the group. And so we can do that by slowly raising it up above until we see that double line like right there. Okay, now we've pulled it from the group. You can see this is the, the sack more or less that held the group. We've got it out of that group up here by itself because we're going to work on just the frame right now. Go over here and do our enhancing again like we've done on the other down here, layer, layer style, style settings. And we'll set our direction of light source. Choose drop shadow. And increase the opacity a little bit here so it shows up when we slide the distance slider to the right. Watching for the shadow to appear. And there it is. Okay, maybe about there might look appropriate. Let's make it a little less sharp by moving this size slider. And I'll add, change the opacity again to make that a little darker, make the shadow more obvious. About like that. That gives us a little sense of depth with that shadow separating the frame from the background. And now I think we can go one step further with this by adding a little bevel control. So I'll select bevel and notice the frame there. And let me move that, uh, I don't know, maybe right about there. You really get a nice sense of roundness with this frame now. Let me uncheck the bevel as you look at the frame there and you'll see the difference. It's checked now. Now it's unchecked. You can see a drastic difference. It looks very flat and sharp edged. When I hit the bevel like that, it rounds off all the edges of everything. Each little square, the outside edge, and the inner edge here. And giving a real true sense of depth between the picture and the frame. And then the little shadow cast by the frame also helps. And we could go one step further actually and Maybe do a stroke. Just a tiny little bit there. Might make a little separation. Okay. Alright, so that pretty well completes our demonstration of frames. There are a multitude of frames to choose from in Photoshop Elements and also in Photoshop. This demonstration dealt with uh, Photoshop Elements version 2023, but all or most of these options are available in uh, any of the earlier versions of Elements also. Okay, so with that we'll click the OK and click off of that and that's our final frame. And that was from the frames choice. We can actually return the frame folder back into its group by dragging it down like that. Now you can see they're all three back in the group again and it shows the three uh, files there in the folder up the top here that's containing these three. So with that I will say thank you for viewing the video and I hope you've enjoyed it and maybe learned something about frames. Until next time this is Giuseppe. Goodbye.